Uh, welcome. I really hope you like my solo. Uh, a solo I made um, from phrases that Philly Joe often played. Philly Joe Jones. Check him out. Um, okay, we'll get right to it. Uh, I will describe only a few of the phrases uh, I played. The first phrase was maybe the most uh, iconic Philly Joe sticking. Uh, you can see it now, it's in triplets, and the sticking is right, left, left, right, left, right, right, left, left. Philly Joe often played this one like two times, so it, well, it, it goes over the bar line, that kind of stuff. And uh, I'll play it for you. One, two, three, four. And in my solo, uh, it went by a lot faster, uh, of course. Uh, okay, this is a super duper Philly Joe sticking. Um, okay, the next thing I played was this. You can see it now. Uh, this is actually quite interesting because I believe that many drummers uh, maybe a guy like Billy Higgins, the wonderful Billy Higgins, who has a very round uh, playing style, would maybe flatten it out playing triplets. Uh, I don't have actual proof of this, but uh, I believe. <laughs> I believe so. Uh, uh, actually, somewhere I probably have proof because I've transcribed. Uh, Billy Higgins as well. Uh, okay, uh, but Philly Joe was so extremely rudimental, uh, so he played this kind of uh, march phrasing instead. Okay, cool. The last uh, thing I want to discuss today is uh, two bars long. I played it at the end of my solo. Uh, the first bar, paradiddles. Um, with accent on the first right, and then on left right. Ah, I hit my leg, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, sounds really cool in a solo. The next bar starts with a paradiddle. And then, a double paradiddle, the one that alternates, right. Left, right, left, le right, left, left. So we have... And then, a paradiddle diddle, the one that doesn't alternate, with the right hand. Right, left, right, right, left, left. So the whole bar becomes... And that way, we in the next bar, we end up on the right, which is kind of nice. Okay, uh, and this one it went by a lot faster in the solo as well. So, uh, but the thing is to start practicing these phrases slow, very, very slowly to get it right from the beginning. Uh, okay, uh, two more things before uh, we are done for today. Uh, regarding the hi-hat, uh, I've said before that Max Roach, he played feathering and hi-hat in 2 and 4 most of the time in his solos. Art Blakey, not necessarily feathering, but the hi-hat was, uh, was there most of the time. Philip Joe actually <coughs> didn't necessarily play the hi-hat all the time in 2 and 4 either. Um, when you look at a Philly Joe transcription, you see the hi-hat like on many different places. And I think the reason for this was that Philly Joe's playing was so rudimentally exact in a good way, um, because he, he applied the rudiments so musically and uh, melodically. But I think his playing was so exact, so uh, Neither Philly Joe or his bandmates really needed the hi-hat on 2 and 4 to feel the beat. 
And I think that's one of the reasons. Um, but it's always a good way to practice these things with the Hyatt and 2 and 4. Okay, the last thing I want to recommend this Bible, the Philly Joe Jones solo book by Jörg Eckel. I think this guy started with John Riley and Kenny Washington, says something about that in the beginning. And it's transcriptions of all the solos Philly Joe ever recorded, all the alternate takes, everything. And it's super accurate sticking suggestions and uh, it's the best 70 bucks I ever spent, I think. So the Philly Joe Jones solo book could be quite hard to, to get to find, but when you do, you will, uh, it will change your life. Okay, that's all for today. I'll be back with the Philly Joe Joni isms uh, one, two, three, and four. Uh, I hope. Ah, oh, this was one, two, and three, and four, and more. Uh, okay, see you next time. I hope you enjoyed this. Bye.